Texas, the new number one in college football. My goodness. First time that Texas has been the number one team in all of college football in 16 years. Got to take it back to 2008, which is wild, right? Because that's the Mike Brown era. That is Michael Crabtree. That is Graham Harrell. That is Mike Leach, RIP. Goodness, we have lots to unpack there. I want to talk about a couple of other teams. I want to talk about Georgia. I want to talk about Oklahoma. I want to talk about Tennessee. I want to talk a little bit about Florida State AM. I want to talk a little bit about Colorado and what to make after what was mostly a sleepy week three. But it's going to gear us up for what I expect to be a raucous week four. For those of you that are new, I'm RJ Young. I host the number one college football show here on the YouTube. It's very excited to have you here. If you're able to join us live, very, very cool of you. And if you are one of the 64% of people that watch this show and do not subscribe, I'm going to invite you to do just that. I'm going to invite you to stop what you're doing and hit that little subscribe button and make me happy, if nothing else. And if, you know, you hate watch it, everybody's got their kink, man. What a strange way to be. But hopefully you are here having a good time just like me. Uh, shout out to Jeremy who asked me how I am doing. You know, it's been raucous the last 18 hours or so because I go from knowing in my bones that Georgia is the number one team in college football to watching Quinn Ewers get hurt, suffer what is called an abdominal strain, go down uh, in the first half against UTSA. And I watch Arch Manning come off the bench and basically put on a show, right? 20, 223 pass yards. And 53 yards is what he's credited for in rushing, but five total TDs. He had one rush of 67 yards where you have people coming out of the woodwork to make the same joke, tired joke, that Mannings aren't supposed to run like this. And I'm like, some of y'all never knew what Arch Manning, Archie Manning was doing. Some of y'all need to go check out the YouTubes and the film because Archie Manning can move. You know, Peyton coming out with, you know, the athleticism skipped a generation because Eli and Peyton didn't get it. And I'm going, I don't know, man. Cupper can run. Y'all can't run. Cupper can run. Cupper play wide receiver. It, it, ain't, it ain't skipping a generation. I think it's just the two of you, if I'm being honest about this. And I would love to hear uh, whether or not they think that's true because uh, people don't remember Cupper had some wheels about him too. Uh, you don't get to play wide receiver without having no wheels about you. But uh, one of the things I love about the Arch Manning story is just how much it seems to be that Arch really likes being his granddaddy's grandson. And the way in which he's been able to carry himself with a level of humility and sincerity and not really aw shucks, but kind of a quiet, I like playing football. It's cool that I get to play football at the University of Texas. And you've got a perfect situation if you are really the University of Texas. Like this is how you draw up the quarterback room. You have a starter who before getting hurt, very much entrenched as a Heisman contender. And is living up to his billing as the number one recruit in the 2021 class. He has not played an entire year being health, or excuse, with it being healthy at Texas. Just hasn't happened. But when he gets hurt, you have the number one player in the 2023 class come in. And more to the point, you have a starter who is not the least bit threatened by the backup quarterback. And you have a backup quarterback who is in no hurry to be the starting quarterback. And you have a head coach who has pretty coolly made this delineation clear for everybody involved that Quinn is the guy and Arch is the number two, while also underplaying the talent of the understudy. Really love this. Like going into halftime at UTSA, Steve Sarkeesian was like, yeah, it's, you know, Arch is out there playing pretty good in his first real, you know, football. And I'm like, dog, we've been seeing that dude absolutely torch people. For quite some time, man. Like we 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 have seen that uh, since spring spring ball this year. You ain't got to hide it for us, and it's not hiding it for us. I think he's really just doing a good job of taking care of Arch in this situation. Now Texas has ULM coming up, and I love this. One of the comments on the on the channel, he called them you la la la, and I was like, dog, it, what what perfect, but also damn, why 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 are we punching like that? And then they're like, yo, RJ, you ranked them one thirty four to start the season. Yeah, I did do that. I did do that. I understand. So I don't expect us to see Quinn Ewers at all against Louisiana Monroe. I just don't. I expect that to be the Arch Manning show. And if they get it out of reach, give Trey Owens an opportunity to run the offense again too. 
And then you get to go into SEC play and make it do what it do, baby. But uh, I'm also looking at this number one ranking that has really driven the day, in, in college football land at least, because Texas being back is a joke that we have been making for a decade. We got Sam Ellinger coming with the microphone talking about we're back, and then you got Tom Herman kind of cringing because they beat a Georgia team that probably didn't want to be there in the Sugar Bowl. And I know what that feels like because I watched Oklahoma do the same thing against Nick Saban in Alabama with Trevor Knight at quarterback. Jackson Arnold giving me real Trevor Knight vibes, too. We'll talk about that. But I'm also looking at this, and I'm asking myself, are there really three kinds of Texas fans? And I think there are. I, th I think there are three kinds of Texas fans once this news came out that Texas last appeared as the number one overall team November 1st, 2008, and then Texas Tech absolutely put on one of the great displays in all of college football, took that from them. And then the Longhorns are the first team outside of Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, LSU, and Michigan to appear number one in the Associated Press poll since Ohio State in 2015. So Texas got 35 first-place votes. Georgia got 23 first-place votes, and Ohio State got five. That has led us to this place where we are looking, which is that Texas is now the Associated Press polls pick to win the national championship. That's the way to read this, right? After three weeks, we think that Texas has the best team in all of football. Now, the first kind of Texas fan is going, wait a second. What do you mean that we're ranked number one now? It's September. Why would you rank us number one in September? We didn't ask for that noise. We didn't want that noise. We like being, you know, right there, third, fourth. That's a good place for Texas to be. We like that. We beat up on a Michigan team that isn't that good. And we knew this going into the season. But then Michigan showed that against Fresno State when they needed to pull out 16-10 to 10 and make that a 20-point win. Then they got thumped by University of Texas. Then they, they won just by 10 against Arkansas State last week, and they got USC coming to their house, which we'll talk about as we get closer and closer to that. But I'm looking at it, and I'm also going, yeah, you don't want the smoke. That's what you're telling me. You don't, you don't want this number one head ran around your, around your head because, as we know from Afro Samurai, once you have the number one headband, you are the hunted. Everybody's coming after you, trying to collect your skull. That's what that means. Ninja Ninja over there trying to, try to help you while you got the robotic teddy bear trying to come for your skull. That's what that means. So get on the good foot. You're wearing the number one headband now. Act like it, okay? I don't want to hear Texas coming out with no excuses whatsoever. Come October 12th, the Red River Shootout comes to town. I don't want to hear no excuses. October 19th, when they got to play a Georgia team that is going to be right where Kirby Swart wants them to be, thanks in large part due to the Associated Press poll. And I don't want to hear nothing when Arkansas finds the will to absolutely give Texas the what for and the how now because as Steve Sarkeesian so accurately said, Arkansas fans hate Texas more than they like themselves. And I'm like, you know, that's not the take you think it is. We all hate our rivals more than we like ourselves. That's, that's college football. You know why that's college football? Because we're always going to win less than we think we should. And until you get to that mountaintop where you are Alabama, where you expect to win the national championship every other year, where you're Clemson, where you are Georgia, you're just going to hate that person across from you, that person you can see within the same zip code, more than you're going to hate anybody else. That's just how this is. They say that thief is the, uh, excuse me, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, all right, but that's because I can see you right there. I can't see nobody else, so I'm going to compare me straight up to who it is that I'm closest to. That's called being a human being. The second kind of Texas fan we got to talk about is the one who swears up and down Rankings don't matter. Look here, son. If rankings don't matter, I need you to tell me what it is doing for Northern Illinois' confidence to know they're the number 23 team in the country. If rankings don't matter, I need you to tell me why people are so upset at me for having Alabama at number seven when the rest of y'all got them at number four. If rankings don't matter, Tell me why there are five SEC teams among the top six teams in the AP poll. Rankings don't matter. You're lying to yourself. You know why we know rankings matter? Because that's literally how we used to pick a national champion. We used to say 
whoever had the most votes, not wins, not conference championships, not NFL draft picks, whoever had the most votes was crowned the national champion, and they never mo- you didn't have to play no national championship game. We called whatever you were playing in the national championship game. If you happen to be playing in the Orange Bowl, that's what we called it. If you happen to be playing in the Sugar Bowl, that's what we called it. It's only here in recent years, the last 20, 25, that we have been able to say we have a national championship game. Rankings 100% matter. If they didn't matter, why do you think Auburn is holding on to being a national champion in 2004 when you know good damn well USC would have mopped the floor with them? And you know this. You know this. Tommy Tuberville gets to walk around Alabama as a national champion. Notre Dame gets to walk around with the 93 national championship ring because they know damn well what happened against Florida State. And they don't give a damn about Boston College, okay? I don't want to hear none of this. Rankings don't matter. So now you got the one on your chest. You're wearing it right here, okay? Wear it. Don't run from it. Wear it. And then that's the third kind of Texas fan. The third kind of Texas fan is going, well, hell yeah. We're the number one team in college football. What took y'all so long? Have you seen what we got back there? We got two of our three running backs are hurt. We got we got a quarterback that can't stay healthy for an entire year. We got a passing. We got a secondary we think is good, but hasn't really been challenged by anybody with a passing attack whatsoever all year. Hell yeah, we're the number one team in college college football. There are absolutely flaws to this Texas team. It's just they haven't played anybody that's good enough to expose them. I don't know when that's going to happen past Georgia or even if it's going to happen before Georgia. But I feel safe in saying that Michigan 2024 is not the measure of a national championship team this year. It's just not. It's not what it's going to be. Meanwhile, I also think that there's something to Texas getting the number one overall ranking when Arch Manning plays most of the snaps for Texas, there's no way of getting around that. I don't know that if you see Texas beat UTSA 50-67 with Quinn Ewers as quarterback, that you are going to make them the number one team in college football, no matter what Georgia did against Kentucky. Because there are two things going on that. One is, welcome to Arch Mania. Because if y'all think that we have been talking way too much about Colorado, Shadour Sanders, Deion Sanders, oh, just you wait. Texas is always going to be top of mind for many of us. Because Texas, like Ohio State, like Georgia, like Alabama, commands a large audience. And nobody thinks their stuff don't stink more than Texas. Texas wants to do it their way in the worst way. That's why they keep playing that damn song. Texas doesn't believe that it needs to genuflect to anybody else ever. And now they know they got a dude that is capable of winning the Heisman Trophy this year and a guy who's capable of winning the Heisman Trophy next year. And they got a team that is capable of winning the national championship the next two years. I, I don't get enough credit for this, so I keep saying it. I said going into this year, 2024 Texas feels like 2017 Georgia, okay? They made the college football playoff. They look like a team that is capable of winning the SEC championship. And because the SEC has the best damn league in all the football, capable of winning the national championship. And I submit to you, who's going to stop them is the answer. Or excuse me, the question that we have to answer. Who's going to stop Texas? 